This program airs statewide on California Public Television and is a California's Gold Classic. Hi, I'm Huell Hauser, and this is the Governor Stanford, which is a very historic locomotive. You see, the Governor Stanford was the very first locomotive used by the Central Pacific Railroad. It was manufactured back on the East Coast and then shipped around Cape Horn, reassembled and put into service back in 1863, just a couple of hundred yards from where it sits right now. Where it sits right now is the California State Railroad Museum, which is a world-class museum. This is the largest and finest railroad museum anywhere in the United States. There are 21 completely restored locomotives here and all kinds of neat educational exhibits that basically trace the development of the railroads, not only in the United States, but specifically right here in California. But we're here not just to visit the museum, but to attend an event that's going on right outside. It should be a lot of fun, and you're invited to come along as we continue our search for California's gold, this time on the railroad. <laughs> Welcome to Rail Fair, commemorating the 10th anniversary of the California State Railroad Museum. Now the press release billed it as the greatest gathering of significant railroad equipment of the modern era, a showcase for both the history and the future of the railroad industry, the definitive railroad event of the second half of the 20th century. Now all that sounds impressive, doesn't it? But the thing is, it was impressive with wonderful old engines everywhere, putting out smoke and steam and all kinds of neat sounds. Lots of people there too, people standing in line, people taking pictures, people climbing all over the trains and then following the trains as they move down the track. I mean, these were hardcore train buffs who were in train heaven. There's nothing that can compare to the trains, especially the steam trains. Why? They're big, they're powerful, they're unique, and you don't get to see them that often. Yeah, we grew up with steam engines, and that's the only place in the world you can see anything like this. Uh -huh. There's no place else in the world like this. You like those those whistles, don't it you? Sounds like it, it just sounds so wonderful. It sends chills up and down your spine. Wait a minute, I can't hear you. I say it just sends chills up and down your spine. You know, it just, it just brings you back to your childhood. Yeah, it's just something very exciting about it. You, you enjoy it the same way? Yes, it's really interesting. You see, they're getting into a contest now, aren't they? Sounds like it. I think the big one's going to win, though. <laughs> now, what have we got here? This is a Tom Thumb. The Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb. It originally ran in 1830. It was built in 1829 to 1830. And it's it, still running today? Still running together. It's under steam. Runs on 85 pounds, steam pressure. Why do they call it the Tom Thumb? Well, the man who designed it was Tom Thumb. It's a... Uh, it, what do you mean the man who designed the, the it man, was Tom man, Thumb? That's his nickname. And it's so small that it fit on a thumbnail. Oh! See? Gentlemen, what are we looking at down here? We don't know. <laughs> We don't know. Well, you had we your head yeah. right in the engine there. Yeah, we wonder whether the steam is leaking or whether it's supposed to be there. That's be what problem. There's a down there that's uh, either a, a leaking or it's come apart or it's supposed to be that way. We're not certain. We're just trying to figure out how anyone knows what's going on here. 
Now, your engine is called the... Daylight. The Daylight. Not the Daylight Express, not the Daylighter. You know, it's the Daylight Period. What, people want to call it other names? Yeah, everybody wants to add Daylight Express or the Daylighter, but it is strictly the Daylight. Well, now tell me about the Daylight, because it's certainly popular here. you got a long line. you got to go back to 1937 when the country was coming out of the Depression, and all trains were black, or they were dark green, or they were dark red. And they had this vision of this very nice, flashy, modern, streamlined train that was colorful to help bring the country up out of the doldrums of the Depression. And this was the outcrop of that. So they painted it orange. In those days, that was revolutionary. you got to remember the area you're dealing in when trains were dirty, uh, they were uncomfortable, but that was the only mode of transportation, not like the airlines today. Uh, locomotives were, were inherently dirty. This one's inherently dirty, but we wash it all the time. <laughs> Now, ladies, what are you all doing standing in line to ride on a new train with all these old trains around? Uh, well, we might want to travel on, on this sometime. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a trip on this sometime. Oh, I got you. Okay, well, have fun. <laughs> She's taking a trip. You know, I don't think I have ever seen an engine this big. Is this the biggest engine ever made? No, this is the largest operating engine in the world today. The Union Pacific had the largest engine ever built, which was called a Big Boy, which was a 4884 instead of a 4664. This is a Challenger class locomotive. Uh, the Big Boy is 11 feet longer. Well, if if this isn't the Big Boy, what is this? What's, what's the nickname for it? This is Challenger class locomotive. They called it the Challenger. It was designed in 1943 to pull troop trains for World War II. Uh, as the war phased out and the troop trains were phased out, then they used it for uh, heavy passenger service and high-speed freight. This thing is absolutely huge when you look at it. Yes. How much tonnage is in here? What you're looking at here with the engine and the tender, the tender holds 5,900 gallons of oil, fuel oil for fire, and 25,000 gallons of water. The engine and tender weighs 1,070,000 pounds. Well, they just don't make anything like this anymore, do they? No, you won't see anything. It's, it's, it's expensive to maintain. That's why steam engines have been phased out. How does it feel driving this little thing? Oh, this is great fun. I never miss a chance to drive. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. What's so special about these little engines? Steam. One word, steam. That's all. So it doesn't make any difference whether it's big steam engines or little steam engines? Well, big steam is more fun than little steam, but little steam is fine. <laughs> now your job is to direct all these engines in the right way? Just the little ones. Uh -huh. Just the little ones. Yeah. Now is everybody cooperating and getting out of the way when they... Mostly everybody is. There's a few uh, diehards that don't want to move. Well, everybody wants to get that special picture, don't they? I understand that, and that's exactly what we'd like them to have is that special picture, but they have to cooperate with us. And get out of the way. And get out of the way, and I wish you'd get out of the way, too, because oh. we're coming out right now. Okay, we'll move. <laughs> now, we're getting ready to go up and take a tour of the caboose. That's right. Now, what do you think your child here is going to think about the caboose? Well, he likes cabooses. That's why we're going to go up in the caboose. What do you mean he likes cabooses? He does. He points <laughs> them out when everyone goes by. Can you say caboose? Can you say caboose? I'll say it when I'm inside. <laughs> well, have fun on the caboose. Thanks. <laughs> what do you think about these old trains? I like them very much. I mm -hmm. wish my children were here to be able to share them. Well, now, you used to ride on trains a lot? No, not a lot, but I did ride on trains. You've been around the track a few times, I'll tell you. <laughs> In the summertime, those kids, I was, I think, 10 11 then. We were sitting on a porch. We were about a quarter of a mile from the tracks, and we used to listen to that. <laughs> Uh -huh. I love that sound and watch count the box cars. <laughs> it's I beautiful. I miss that. these old uh -huh. giants. Now, did you bring your son here to see it for the first time? Is he? he last time he was in a stroller. This time he can appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it about this that you think he needs to see? The history, the history that's here, and try to ingrain that in him that that there is history. There is not all computers and and that type of wizardry. That's what's fun to see. Make him understand that this is how America got back and forth across this land. Two men walking with a one foot sound, peg leg shorty and peg leg brown.
Two men walking with a one foot sound. Peg leg short and peg leg round. Two men walking one foot. Hold up. Move on down the line. Getting on down of 15 line. foot. This is um, a line and bar gang. A line and bar gang. A line and bar gang. They, their work was with the extra force. A group of railroad workers called the extra force. Now, they were track repairmen. Actually, what they were, track repairmen. Their work was to keep the tracks uh, in proper condition for safety and maintenance of the, 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 the equipment that ran over it, keeping the tracks in line with the wheels. Now, how did this cadence develop? All right. well, that's old story. This came way, that's old story. That best. <laughs> you, you know, you, have you ever seen a picture with these galley slaves there pulling the, roll, the oars in time to a pounding drum? It's the same principle. You got to get the boys together so that the power of impulse will come at the same time. From each person. Syncope. That's, and that, that's so what, when everybody's pulling together, you've you got can, all that energy. Yeah, but right. if you just one pull and then the next one pull and so forth, you dissipate the energy there, and it, it, it won't move nowhere. You only have, say, a 200-pound man there, but when you got 16 men pulling there, you got quite a few tonnes. You can move. <laughs> we can shake that track. Way down yonder, on my knees, thought I heard a chicken sneeze. Way down yonder on my knee, thought I heard a chicken knee. Way down on my, thought I, oh yeah, all right. The reason I love my baby so, she makes five dollars and give me four. The <laughs> reason I love my baby so, make five dollars, give me four. The track going then. What is that movement you're that doing there? The motion, that, that bip, bip, you see, and, and the motion when we line the track. Uh huh. See, the sound is bip, bip. That's called to get everybody in line. You know, the third liquid with the weight. Bip, bip. Yeah, the third liquid with the weight. Everybody put the weight at the same time. Look at the ball. How he stands. More like a farmer than a railroad man. Look at the boss man, how he stand. Oh, like a farmer and a railroad man. Look at how he, oh, like, how, oh, oh, yeah. Move on down, lead man. 15 more feet. You got to remember now that uh, we are giving you the emasculated version. What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, they've been sanitized. Oh. <laughs> you know, oh. we, we, can't, uh, we can't say the things that we said out there with a bunch of men out there in the wilderness. You know, not we can't say that over TV or in uh, in front of women. Well, thank time. you very much for cleaning up your act for us. <laughs> Look in the air. What did I see? A mosquito wigging at I and me. <laughs> Look in the air. What did I see? Mosquito wink as I and me. Looking up in air. Oh, yeah. move on down the line one more time. Do you miss it? No, I don't miss it, but I enjoyed it when I was out there. So I'm tired now. I just enjoy it. Whenever I hear a train, I just got to look at it. They <laughs> enjoy it. I see the men working. I just like to look at them, see how they're doing in this day and time. And my day and time, This my day is antique to what they do now. But it worked. It worked. All of it worked. It worked good, too. The railroads have had an influence on California history second to none. The railroads established the locations of our cities and towns, the kinds of jobs we have, our industries, agriculture, water, politics, and everything else. The railroads have had an influence on this state uh, like nothing else. The thing I've noticed the most when I talk with people here is their absolute, almost a personal attachment to these old steam engines when they see them. It's like they're seeing an old friend or an mm -hmm. old member of the family. Mm -hmm. In 1950, that's not too many years ago, in 1950, there were 47,000 steam locomotives in the United States. 47,000, that's a huge number. Today, there are only about 1,600 preserved in the whole of North America. So it's possible for individual railroad enthusiasts and fans and even the general public to know and to, to recognize specific individual locomotives in the way that, that uh, someone who owns a horse can pick it out of the pasture amongst a herd of horses. And these are people who have an interest in this subject and who uh, look forward to seeing old friends like old locomotives at a very like rail fair. What is, the, what is it that draws people? Railroads have had an incredible part in American popular culture. 
The first book we give kids to read, even today, is almost invariably The Little Engine That Could. Ask a three-year-old child what sound a train makes, and that child will make the sound of a whistle. You know, Johnny Cash has gotten far wealthier than you and I ever will be singing about that lonesome whistle in the night. And there hasn't been that lonesome whistle in, in this country in two generations. The, the point here is that railroads are deeply ingrained in our society, and we surround ourselves with representations of this industry. Toy and model railroading, the sound of that whistle. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like that. The sound of that whistle is a symbol in American society. In practical terms, are steam engines a thing of the past? On a day-to-day -day basis, the steam engine is an obsolete, archaic technology. They'll never pull America's trains again. But museums like ours in Sacramento, events like Rail Fair, bring them back to life and give the people of today's generation, and we hope tomorrow's generation, a chance to, to experience or relive what these machines were like and the qualities and characteristics of railroading of a bygone era. I was brought up in those days, and, and it's right comes within here from me. Well, we had so much fun at Rail Fair that on our way home, we decided to stop over in the community of Jamestown in Tuolumne County, which is a two hour drive south and a little east of Sacramento. Located right in the heart of gold country, Jamestown is a picturesque little place full of history. But we were there because a lot of people at Rail Fair had told us that if we were interested in actually riding a neat old steam train, the place to go was Railtown State Historic Park in Jamestown. Now we drove into the park right outside town about 9 o'clock Saturday morning and things were pretty quiet. Actually, quiet is an understatement. The place was dead as a doornail. Nobody here. But since the park covered some 26 acres, I nosed around a little bit more. Actually, I heard some noises coming out of the roundhouse and found a real person working inside on one of the old engines, greasing up the wheels. And then about 15 minutes later, I met the head man, who gave me kind of an orientation about what to expect. This really is a a different kind of a, a park, isn't it, a museum? Yeah, it really is because it became a museum sort of by default. It was, uh, when it got old enough, they started calling it a museum. <laughs> uh, uh, you can really uh, come here and experience the sights and the smells and the sound and the real feel of railroading because uh, our roundhouse, for instance, has been in continuous operation since the turn of the century. The guys are still working down there with the same tools and the same dirt and the same grease. So it's a very up close and personal kind of experience. Absolutely, it really gives you the feel of what railroading was like at the turn of the century. Now as far as getting the feel, we didn't have to wait very long because just about then old number 28 came out of the roundhouse. Standing there watching all this was like a time warp because you see this is the real thing. This is the original site of the Sierra Railway, dating from 1897, when it was built to connect the mines and lumber mills of Tuolumne County with the rest of the world. And today, they're still doing things pretty much exactly like they did back then, including getting water from the big tank and then chugging down the tracks to the station to pick up the first load of passengers for the day. Now the passengers couldn't wait to get on. All of us excited by seeing and hearing old number 28 as it had steamed up to the station to hook up to the coaches. Everybody got their tickets punched and then picked out their seats and prepared for the journey. Pretty soon we were off, steaming through some of the prettiest countryside I've ever seen. Of course the kids and some of the adults were walking up and down in the aisles before we'd hardly even gotten started. Lots of people had their cameras with them and were hanging out the windows. 
which we'd specifically been told not to do. And one lady took advantage of the clickety-clack of the rails to take a nap. But the one thing we all had in common was that we were thoroughly enjoying ourselves. Everybody having a good time? Oh, this is terrific. I haven't been on a train since I was a little girl. This is a brownie troop. Oh, this is a brownie troop. Girl Scout brownie troop, and they're having a wonderful day. Uh-huh. <clears throat> They came from Atwater, California. Well, aren't you supposed to be keeping your eyes on the brownies? Oh, they're, they're, they were taught to survive. Oh. This is called survival. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> they're doing a good job. Now, why are you standing up instead of well, sitting down? I want to I wanna take it all in. It's great. <laughs> Smells good. The whistle sounds good. <laughs> Used to commute on an old, and, uh, one of these when they were younger. You know. Now we're driving all the time, so. We thought we'd just take a good shot at this one and we just join the heck out of it. We almost missed doing this just because of the, the look of the outside of the place and everything. We thought, well, that doesn't look like too much fun. Uh-huh. And then we came up and checked the tickets out and said, oh, heck, let's do it. You uh-huh. know? And, and we now did. you're having a good time. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> it's kind of a creaky, uh, kind of a, <laughs> these cars wow. make some noise. If you were as old as this car is, you'd be creaky too. This car was built in 1914 by the Canadian Pacific Railroad. So actually it's holding up pretty well. Yes, it sure is, believe me. (laughs) Now here's a guy who's doing something he's not supposed to do. You're not supposed to have your camera out the window like that. Uh, Absolutely. (laughs) Oh, really? How else do you get a picture? <laughs> what are you getting a shot of out there? Well, now I'm not getting too much of going straight. Uh-huh. But when he's on a bend, I got the advantage of that much, right? Uh-huh. Plus the video and all the sound going around the bend. I pick them up and get a pretty good shot. Now, what are you going to do with these videos when you get home with them? Retape them and put them on big tape. And look at them over uh, and over and over again. I was just, we were at the uh, rail fair, Sacramento. I got so many miles of tape. <laughs> It'll take me hours to review it all and put it back together. I got some great shots. Well, it'll be good memories, though. I got so many rare tapes, you can't believe it. I really do. <laughs> You're going to have to look at every no, put up. No, sir. <laughs> Your kids are really enjoying this. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It was their idea. Yeah. It was their idea. Uh, yeah. We've been to the train museum in Sacramento, and we've been to the museum here as well, but never ridden the train before. And every time we've come, they say, let's ride the train. So So here you are. We decided to do it today. Now, is this right in the middle of Mother Lode country right here? Yes, we will be crossing the Mother Lode vein itself. And that Mother Lode vein starts uh, up uh, north of Placerville, and it runs south about six or seven miles from here. And when there's a storm goes through this part of the country, after the storm, you can see guys panning gold right along that creek. Just like they did? In the olden days. Well, this really is living history, isn't it? it? Is I mean, this definitely. is this is the mother load. This is what this train ride is so unique because we go through so much of the historical background of California. Of course, California has a lot of other spots too, but then this also talks and goes through the actual mother load. What are you taking pictures of out there? California. (laughs) Well, there's a lot of it out there to take pictures of. Look at that nice grass. Yeah. You don't see too much grass like that in California. Well, you don't see too many trains like this in California either. What do you think about this thing? This is only the beginning. This nation is going to rediscover passenger trains, as you're finding out. And California is in the forefront of uh, promoting the use of trains. They found out that it takes 16 lanes of highway to replace one lane of railroad track. You sound like a train man to me. I am. I spent 40 years as a conductor. Yeah, it's a fascinating travel. You meet a lot of nice people. And you get to enjoy, I think, a lifestyle that's 
too many people are missing out on today. It's uh, kind of take it easy or no great hurry. Not many people like that anymore. Well, our train trip is over, and as we get off the train, we get ready to get into our car, onto the crowded freeway, and fight our way back into downtown LA. But as we're going down that crowded freeway, we'll be taking with us wonderful memories of this week we spent at Rail Fair in Rail Town, a week in which, through the help of these old steam trains, we were able to reconnect with part of our past a part of our past that's very much alive and well. Hope you had fun. Be sure and join us again next time as we continue our search for California's gold. Steam locomotives are alive. They live, they breathe. If you've been in them, they pulse while they're sitting there, even at idle. They're real. They're not a machine. They're really alive when they're under fire. And they're very much cold and dead when they're not under fire. It's quite a piece of machinery. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and I sure hope you enjoyed this adventure. If you'd like to see it again, or share it with your family or friends, or perhaps donate a copy to your local school or library, it's available on video cassette and on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727, and we'll be glad to send it to you right away.